In this series, we will analyse teams, identify problem areas and suggest solutions in the form of incoming players. We won't follow gossip, rumours or conjecture, we don't have inside information and we're not considering the brand value of players, purely their on-field performance and their suitability for the team in question. And today's team is Arsenal. Welcome to Sensible Transfers. Now this really could have been at least two videos. Last season, Arsenal's system never seemed settled. Looking at the Premier League, Unai Emery's side played a back three in 13 games, winning 64% of their available points. They used a back four in the remaining games, winning 60% of available points. Of course, within both those variants, there are different systems. The most successful was a form of 4-3-1-2, or midfield diamond, winning 73% of points, but this was only used three times. However, Unai Emery's preferred system at the beginning of his Arsenal tenure was the 4-2-3-1. It's the system he's used most overall and it was his preference to Sevilla. So that's the system that we'll be basing this video on. We've looked for players under 27 who've racked up more than 800 minutes so that there's a reasonable data set and each player is either entering their peak or is still a prospect. Arsenal's major issue is clear. They conceded too many goals last season, 51, the ninth worst record in the league despite their fifth placed finish. They were even worse for expected goals against, giving up an XGA of 54.4, the 11th worst in the league. While central midfielders have their part to play in this, as do wide defenders, it's clear that Arsenal need an upgrade or two in central defence. Holding and Bielek will develop well, but Arsenal should look for a strong defender who can also help with deep build-up play. Our first choice, before frustratingly he was snapped up by Sevilla, was Bordeaux's Jules Kunde. He was fourth overall in Liga for total progressive passes, a great indicator of his ability to generate attacking opportunities for his team from deep positions. He plays with authority and elegance and would have been a brilliant signing, but sadly, for the Gunners, Monchi worked his magic first and Kunde will be one to watch at Sevilla. A strong potential option is Hoffenheim's 22-year-old Austrian centre-back Stefan Posch. Posch is 6'4 and wins 52% of his aerial duels, while competing in 10.2 defensive duels per 90, the second highest in Europe's top 5 leagues, for players under consideration. He only wins around 25% of them, but he's a very proactive defender, pushing out and looking to pressure the opposition. His Hoffenheim experience means that he's capable in a back three, but he can look a little rash and his left-footed passing needs work. He's physically imposing, with lots of potential, but not the finished article. With a valuation of around 6 million euros, though, he would be a good option. Arsenal have already been linked with William Saliba, a 6'4", 18-year-old, who played almost 1,400 minutes for Saint-Étienne last season, with a similar physical profile to Posh. Saliba is a strong defender, winning 31.4% of his defensive duels, 61% of his aerial duels, and making 5.17 interceptions per 90. 15 forward passes per 90 at 77% is also healthy, but however promising he is, Saliba has had very little top-level experience from which to draw sensible conclusions. He's one for the future, but Arsenal might do well to pick him up now, though it's hard to be sure he's ready for a full season in a demanding role. Nonetheless, signing him would make sense and can be endorsed as a sensible transfer like Posh. He's raw, but Arsenal could potentially pick up both and begin to construct a tough physical backline with a high ceiling. Attacking midfield is crucial if Arsenal are to move to a regular consistent 4-2-3-1. Last season, the attack could look ponderous in build-up as well, with Arsenal 14th in the league for dribbles per 90, albeit with the 5th best percentage success rate. They were 6th best for progressive runs per 90, but Arsenal's 13.8 pales when compared to Manchester City's 22.5. They were also 4th best for deep completions, 13.6 per 90, though only 7th for accuracy. This indicates a team that gets the ball into good areas and creates good chances, albeit without maximising their ball-carrying ability. However, Arsenal were only 11th for shots per 90. Their offensive ability was reduced by a lack of dynamic runners off and on the ball, leading to attacks that were well-constructed but lacking the incision that really puts defences on the back foot. Part of the reason that Emery moved towards two strikers towards the end of the season and brought back Ramsey was that late runs from deep were not forthcoming. Meza Ozil is still a creative force but lacks dynamism, 
Arsenal need to make sure that intricate passes result in unexpected movement and shooting chances. We've looked, therefore, for a dynamic number 10 who can operate ahead of the midfield double pivot, making runs to support the striker or moving into wide spaces to help the wide attackers, combined with high shot volume and ability to generate key passes and who gets touches in the box. Now, Joaquin Correa, 24 and at Lazio, meets the criteria. He managed five goals and six assists in Serie A last season, just over three shots per 90 with a 43% accuracy rate and 0.74 key passes per 90. And crucially, he's a dynamic runner, making 8.2 dribbles per 90 with 66% success and 3.1 progressive runs per 90, managing 4.4 touches in the opposition box. Now, he's valued at around 20 million euros though, so unless Arsenal offload some players, he could be out of their price range. But if not, he's exactly the sort of player that Arsenal should look at. However, a more sensible move could be looking within, because for this sort of dynamic attacking central midfield role, Arsenal already have Joe Willock and Emil Smith-Rowe. Willock has shown the knife for goal in the under-23s, he carries the ball well, gets forwards dynamically and looks a real prospect. Smith-Rowe may end up playing further back, but has a similar propensity for dynamic running and a greater physical presence than Willock. If Arsenal are to improve the energy and athleticism of their team, without spending money across the areas we've identified, these are two under-23 players who are ready to step up and assume more of a role within the first team. And sometimes it pays to trust what you already have. With wide attackers, for the same reasons as with the attacking midfield berth, we're looking at players who can add dynamism, dribbling and shooting volume. An outside choice is Alexis Claude Maurice, playing for Lorient in Ligue 2. Making 2.57 progressive runs per 90, taking 1.99 shots per 90 with a 46% accuracy, and scoring 0.39 goals per 90 from an XG of 0.24. He's a clear attacking threat, cutting inside from the left. He also made 8 dribbles per 90 with 71% success rate, and has real skill and balance carrying the ball. He's an outside choice though for two reasons. Alex Iwobi should nail down the starting left wing slot, which is where Claude Maurice is happiest. And he's only in Ligue 2. Having said that, and unusually for a sensible transfer suggestion, we would probably buy him anyway, as he looks to have an excellent ceiling. Could be available fairly cheaply, and could be loaned out for experience if the squad is crowded. Viktor Tsiganov of Dynamo Kiev is another interesting young player, though he would certainly command the higher fee. He's a left-footed inside forward, a good runner with the ball at his feet who scored 11 league goals from an XG of 9.4 and made 4.2 dribbles per 90 with 77% success. He's managed 9 assists with an XA of 7.5 and 2.3 deep completed passes or crosses per 90, showing that he gets into dangerous areas and makes things happen. Valued at 20 million euros though, he could be a stretch for Arsenal and a gamble if the fee is that sort of level. Our choice, therefore, is Robert Skov from FC Copenhagen. He scored 20 goals, including 7 penalties from an XG of 12.3, shooting 3.9 times per 90. His 6.1 dribbles per 90 at 77% success is strong, as are 2.5 progressive runs per 90. He also managed 3.3 deep completed crosses or passes per 90, though he only managed 3 assists. That's not Skov's main function though, he's a goal scorer. Left-footed, right-footed, he can dribble and finish or pop up in the box to slot home crosses. And he's exactly the sort of exciting, dynamic player who would inject pace and trickery into Arsenal's attacking options. If he can be persuaded away from Denmark, he could cost in the region of 15 million euros. Now these three areas are not the only ones in which Arsenal may wish to strengthen. Left-back may still be problematic, and if Hector Bellerin continues to have injury issues, he will need an understudy. We feel, though, that Arsenal have a central midfield of Matteo Guendouzi and Lucas Torreira, and that pivot should be allowed to develop together, while players like Maitland-Niles provide an interesting backup option. Arsenal need to add youth, dynamism and attacking unpredictability, while also developing a physically imposing back line, and these transfers could achieve that for a reasonable price. And here is what our team would look like cost-effective options who would improve the defence and attack and change Arsenal's team profile for the better. These are sensible transfers.